Hello, Game of Thrones fans! I'm Mae from Fluent You, and today we are breaking down this iconic scene where two of my favorite characters meet for the first time. You'll finally understand Danny's huge title and learn some English along the way. First, we'll watch the full clip with subtitles. Then we'll take a look at key vocabulary and expressions. And after that, it'll be time for you to test yourself and rewatch the clip, but without subtitles. Let's go to part one. You stand in the presence of Daenerys Stormborn of House Targaryen, rightful heir to the Iron Throne, rightful queen of the Andals and the First Men, protector of the Seven Kingdoms, the mother of dragons, the Khaleesi of the Great Grass Sea, the Unburnt, the Breaker of Chains. This is Jon Snow. He's king in the north. Thank you for traveling so far, my lord. I hope the seas weren't too rough. The winds were kind, your grace. Uh, apologies. I have a flea-bottom accent, I know. But Jon Snow is king in the north, your grace. He's not a lord. Forgive me. Your grace, this is Sir Davos Seaworth. Forgive me, Sir Davos. I never did receive a formal education, but I could have sworn I read the last king in the north was Torrin Stark, who bent the knee to my ancestor, Aegon Targaryen. In exchange for his life and the lives of the Northmen, Torrin Stark swore fealty to House Targaryen in perpetuity. Or do I have my facts wrong? I wasn't there, Your Grace. No, of course not. But still, an oath is an oath. And perpetuity means... What does perpetuity mean, Lord Tyrion? Forever. Forever. So I assume, my lord, you're here to bend the knee. Now let's take a deeper look at this scene and analyze some vocabulary words and expressions. You stand in the presence of Daenerys Stormborn of House Targaryen, rightful heir to the Iron Throne, rightful queen of the Andals and the First Men, you stand in the presence of Daenerys Stormborn of House Targaryen. Stormborn. Here, storm is an adverb that comes from the noun thunderstorm. It's describing what conditions Danny was born or brought into life in. In other words, she was born during a thunderstorm. House. So in Game of Thrones, we hear the word house all the time. Hi, Eddard. The House Stark. Ramsay of House Bolton. Of House Targaryen. But most of the time, it doesn't refer to an actual house. When the noun house is followed by a family name or a last name, it refers to members of the same family, or more importantly, members that share the same blood. Otherwise, they're bastards. This is mostly used for people of noble origins. Rightful heir to the Iron Throne, rightful queen of the Andals, and the first men. Heir. An heir is a person legally entitled to a person's property or rank on that person's death, so when that person dies. Notice that the H is silent. So for example, Prince William is currently the next heir to the British throne, so he's the next <laughs> king. This is also true for Danny. Since her father was king, she believes she is the heir to the Iron Throne. Rightful. The adjective rightful comes from the addition of the adjective right, meaning proper or correct, to the suffix full. The suffix full describes something that is full, literally the opposite of empty. That makes total sense to Danny's claim to the throne. She is the only correct or proper person to occupy the throne because of her ancestry. Protector of the Seven Kingdoms the mother of dragons, the Khaleesi of the Great Grass Sea, the Unburnt, the Breaker of Chains. Protector of the Seven Kingdoms, mother of dragons, the Khaleesi of the Great Grass Sea, the Unburnt, the Breaker of Chains. Protector. 
A protector is someone that keeps someone or something safe. For example, Batman is the protector of Gotham City, much like Danny is the protector of the humble and the slaves. Hang on a sec. They totally make a cute couple. Great. Be very careful here. You probably think that great is a synonym for very good. And usually it is. But, but, but it's actually a synonym for large. For instance, tigers, lions, and leopards are some examples of great cats. Breaker. Breaker is a noun that comes from the verb break. It's a person responsible for breaking things or making things come apart into pieces. So Danny is known as the breaker of chains because she freed many slaves. For example, in my house, I'm known as the breaker of glasses because I frequently break glasses and cups and mugs and sometimes plates too. I hope the seas weren't too rough. I hope the seas weren't too rough too. You are probably already familiar with the adverb to. The problem is that I frequently see students use it as a synonym for very, but the connotation between the two are completely different. The basic difference is that very emphasizes the word that follows it. To before a word means that there is more than what is wanted. So it's actually a negative connotation. Take a look at this example. I love chocolate very much. I eat one piece of chocolate every day. I love chocolate too much. I eat a whole box every day. Rough. Rough is an adjective that describes something that is difficult or unpleasant. It's very commonly used to describe terrible weather conditions. Here's another example. They had a rough winter. It snowed every day for a month. Apologies. I have a flea bottom accent, I know. But Jon Snow is king in the north, your grace. He's not a lord. Forgive me. Your grace, this is Sir Davos Seaworth. Apologies. I have a flea bottom accent, I know, but Jon Snow is king in the north, your grace. He's not a lord. Forgive me, your grace, this is Sir Davos. Apologies. Apologies is a more formal way of saying you're sorry, but we usually only use this form when we actually did something wrong. So the next time this happens to you, instead of saying, I'm sorry, man, you can say, apologies, my lord. Accent. An accent is a variation in speech caused by location. For example, I have an American accent, but in House of the Dragon and Game of Thrones, the characters have British accents. If you want to be fluent and easily have conversations with natives, whatever their accents may be, exposing yourself to real world content like on Netflix and YouTube is key. But a lot of the time, the subtitles are wrong. And in English, the meaning of the words depends largely on context. But your girls got you back because with Fluent You, understanding even the hardest of accents looking at you, Irish, becomes a piece of cake. What is Fluent You, you may be asking? It is an app that features literally hundreds of music videos, movie clips, series, TV shows, and more, and it'll take your English to the next level. Fluent U not only has interactive subtitles where you can click on the word and get context specific meanings, but there's a video dictionary where you can check out other video examples where the same exact vocabulary word was used. Plus, there are personalized quizzes where they test your comprehension and speaking skills as well. If you're serious about learning English, there's a free 14-day trial in the description box below. But Jon Snow is king in the North, your grace. He's not a lord. Your grace. In Game of Thrones, your grace is actually a title used to speak to monarchs like kings and queens. 
Nowadays, your majesty or your highness is used more frequently. Forgive me. To forgive means to forget a mistake someone has made or to grant a pardon. Here, Danny is using the imperative form to ask them to pardon her. If you want to know more about the imperative form, make sure you check out this video right up here. I never did receive a formal education, but I could have sworn I read the last king in the north was Torin Stark, who bent the knee to my ancestor, Aegon Targaryen. I never did receive formal education, but I could have sworn that the last king in the north was Torin Stark, who bent the knee to my ancestor, Aegon Targaryen did. You might think that the auxiliary verb did look strange here since we usually don't use it in the positive form. But when you want to emphasize a statement, we can use did to express that the statement is in fact true, despite what others think. And you can use this in the present form as well. For example, I do take a shower every day. Formal. If you have a formal education, then you have a traditional education. So one of the definitions of formal is traditional. Since Danny spent most of her life running away from people that were trying to kill her, she didn't have a lot of time to study or to have an education. I wonder if I can use this excuse. Here's an example. A wedding requires formal clothes. Sworn. Sworn is the past participle of the verb swear, and we use it when we strongly believe in something. Here's an example. I swear I saw a real shark when I was at the beach right in front of me a long time ago when I was a child. In exchange for his life and the lives of the Northmen, Torrin Stark swore fealty to House Targaryen in perpetuity. Or do I have my facts wrong? I wasn't there, Your Grace. No, of course not. But still, an oath is an oath. Torrin Stark swore fealty to House Targaryen in perpetuity in exchange for his life and the lives of the Northmen. But still, an oath is an oath. Swore fealty to. We saw earlier that swear can mean believe, but it can also mean promise. So if you swear fealty to someone, you promise to be loyal to them, usually a lord, in exchange for. If you do something or give something in exchange for something else, you do it or give it in order or because you want to get or receive that thing. So how Stark promised to be loyal to House Targaryen in return or in exchange for not being killed by House Targaryen. That's fair. Here's another example. If this video is helpful, don't forget to subscribe in exchange for more video lessons. Oath. An oath is a formal way or a fancy way of saying a promise. So when people get married, they make oaths to be together until they die or at least until the hangover sets in. And perpetuity means... What does perpetuity mean, Lord Tyrion? Forever. Forever. So I assume, my lord, you're here to bend the knee. In perpetuity means... What does in perpetuity mean, Lord Tyrion? Forever. So I assume, my lord, you're here to bend the knee. In perpetuity. Like teacher Tyrion said, in perpetuity means forever. So it's basically a fancy way of saying forever. It's used a lot in more formal English. I want $10,000 a week in perpetuity. You and me both, sister. Assume. If you assume something, then that means you think or you believe it without necessarily having proof. It's very similar to the verb suppose. Here's another example. I assume you'll download the PDF of this lesson since you don't want to forget all of this awesome vocab. Bend the knee. Bend the knee can literally mean bend your knee, 
But in the context of Game of Thrones, bend the knee is actually a synonym for bowing or kneeling so that you show submission to someone. In this case, it's always a ruler like a queen or a king. Let it happen again. Bend the knee. Listen, if I bend the knee, I'm going to bend the knee to Now it's time to test your knowledge, but this time without subtitles. Oh, oh, and leave a comment down below telling me who you would bend the knee to. I'm definitely Team Danny. Dracarys. You stand in the presence of Daenerys Stormborn of House Targaryen, rightful heir to the Iron Throne, rightful queen of the Andals and the First Men, protector of the Seven Kingdoms, the mother of dragons, the Khaleesi of the Great Grass Sea, the Unburnt, the Breaker of Chains. This is Jon Snow. He's king in the north. Thank you for traveling so far, my lord. I hope the seas weren't too rough. The winds were kind, your grace. Uh, apologies. I have a flea-bottom accent, I know. But Jon Snow is king in the north, your grace. He's not a lord. Forgive me. Your grace, this is Sir Davos Seaworth. Forgive me, Sir Davos. I never did receive a formal education, but I could have sworn I read the last king in the north was Torrin Stark, who bent the knee to my ancestor, Aegon Targaryen. In exchange for his life and the lives of the Northmen, Torrin Stark swore fealty to House Targaryen in perpetuity. Or do I have my facts wrong? I wasn't there, Your Grace. No, of course not. But still, an oath is an oath. And perpetuity means... What does perpetuity mean, Lord Tyrion? Forever. Forever. So I assume, my lord, you're here to bend the knee. Okay, despite being Team Danny, I totally admit that Jon Snow deserves an awesome title like Danny. I don't want it. I never have. Game of Thrones, like House of the Dragon, can be a bit more challenging for some students because of the British accents. Immersion and real-life context-based videos are the key to mastering English. So make sure you check out this video right here where we go over some of the best TV shows to learn British English. TV show number seven is actually one of my absolute favorites. I'll see you there.